So I'm going to come and talk to you again and share some of the goodness of Jesus, uh, the love of the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit with you. Um, it's just it's going to be a short teaching on body, soul and spirit. Um, somebody's asked me, what is the difference between body, soul and spirit? Well, mainly between soul and spirit. You now we're called to um, people talk about getting soul saved. And then what, how does that relate to us having a spirit, a born again spirit? So I just want to address that a little bit just to put it in the context of scripture. Um, so 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, Paul says to them, may you be sanctified in your body, your soul and your spirit. So your, the word body would be bios or, or the flesh they, or socks. They translate it uh, sometimes as socks, which is flesh or bio, which is also flesh. It means your physical body. So we are in a, in a sense triune beings. We have a body, which is this earthly flesh, which will be renewed one day at the resurrection. And we have a soul. And the soul is actually our, our psyche, our, our, like where we get the word psychology from. It's our personality, our thinking, our willpower. So it's the part of us that relates um, to the earth around us. It's, in a sense, our senses induce feelings and thinking. That is the soulish side of us. And then there's a side of us of, of the spirit. Now, let me just say... In Greek thinking, these things are, are like separated. But actually in, in Judeo-Christian thinking, Jewish thinking, when Jesus talked about spirit and soul and body, and, and when it talks about this in the book of Thessalonians uh, 1, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, it's an integrated deal. You can't, it, you can't put it in boxes. We are not, there's not a box which says body and a box which says soul and a box which says spirit. They are one in the Lord, just like the Trinity. You know, we are we are created in God's image, like a Trinitarian type being, but we are one being. But the thing, the question is, is like, well, what happens? Why did Jesus say in John chapter three, we must be born again by the spirit? And the reason he says that is because when the fall took place, when Adam and Eve chose to eat of the, um, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's a psychological thing. That's a soulish thing. It's living by the soul. It's living by knowledge. And we know in, in, um, that knowledge puffs up. And knowledge, in a sense, um, if we, it's like techniques, methods, and practices, and principles. We're not called to live by that kind of knowledge. We're called to live by the Spirit. But, but um, the Father said, or the God said to Adam and Eve, He said, If you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. Now, <laughs> we know they didn't die physically. But what happened, spiritually they died. There was a separation. Their spirits became dead in their sin. They were spiritually dead in their sin because the wages of sin is death. So that wasn't good news because at one stage they were spiritual beings that were relating to God. They actually saw God in the garden. There was no separation. But when they sinned and partook of the knowledge, when they chose knowledge over relationship and intimacy, their spirits died. And it actually like there was a veil that descended. They were expelled from this Eden, the spiritual, physical realm. You see, that's what we call, we call to be spiritual, born again beings, new creations, like Adam and Eve originally were. They related to God, not just by faith, they saw him, they participated in an intimate relationship with him in that garden. But when the knowledge of good and evil came and they sinned, separation took place there was a veil and actually says they were expelled from eden and angels and angels are ministering spirits that came with a sword and there was like this separation between this physical realm and the spiritual realm and then mankind then lived a soulish life they lived in the body the bios the body by the soul by by in a sense their senses um, their feelings, and they were dead in their sin, and and that and, and they didn't have that intimacy with God. 
But the good news is, Jesus says we must be born again. And what happens when we're born again, when we repent of our sins, when we repent of living off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when we repent of our pride and say, Lord, I need you. I need to be born again. I need to come alive in my spirit. The good news is Jesus opened the door for us to, to come back into that place of Eden, that place of the garden, that intimate relationship. By now, it's, it, right now it's by faith. Right now we, we have intimacy with God. We can have ecstatic experiences. We can get caught up in the spirit because we are born again and we now live body, soul and spirit. But the difference is now is that the spirit is the one in control. When we're born again, the spirit man, the spirit person is the one that dominates the psyche or the soul and the body. That's why we, we need to live in the expectation of healing. We need to live in the expectation of having our minds renewed in the ways of God. And we need to live in that expectation of having spiritual experiences, signs and wonders and miracles. But even better than that, we live in that expectation of intimacy by the Holy Spirit with the living God. And some of us are having those experiences where we're being caught up into the heavenlies, being caught up, like Paul says, I've been caught up into the third heaven. I've had those ecstatic type experiences. I can't explain them. It's just sometimes I, I'm, I'm just, I just know that uh, I'm here. I'm seated on the earth. But it also says we're seated with him in the heavenly realms. You know, um, just as Jesus is seated in the heaven, but he lives in you and me. There's this dichotomy. There's this paradox. But we are spurred now, born again, spiritual beings. And we can have these spiritual experiences with God, intimacy, through the Holy Spirit, he will talk to us. We will see signs and wonders, miracle, natural things speeding up. That is a miracle. Miracle is when natural laws are over, overcome. And we do that by moving in the Spirit. So we are body, soul, and spirit. And what we need to do is renew our minds. Romans 12, 2 says, renewed in the thinking of your mind. So what we have to do when we get born again, the, we... we uh, the Spirit comes and fills us, makes our spirit come alive. It was dead in sin, hidden in sin. Now we're alive. We're spiritual beings. And our spirit starts teaching us the anointing. The Spirit of God in us teaches us the ways of God. And we subject the thinking of the mind, the psyche to the Spirit. That's why, to be honest with you, don't get me wrong when I say it, there's a place for... Um, psychological healing from a like a, in a christian sense of renewal of the mind but we don't live like that anymore we live according to the spirit it's the spirit that heals it's the spirit that renews the mind in us as we read the word and as we allow the spirit the anointing of god to teach us so i hope that helps you teaching on body soul and spirit the soul, just to clarify the soul is not the same as the spirit the spirit is that eternal part of us that came from god we will return with God to God and, and, and our personalities. And in the end, we will get that renewed body. The part of us that is not renewed at this time, the only part of us is our bodies. There we're going to get a new one, <laughs> a body of light. <laughs> and we're all going to look beautiful. <laughs> and we're no longer, but even now we're new creations. And we're called, as it says in um, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we're called to discern ourselves now according to the Spirit not according to the outward appearance. So what we need to do, and for those of you who are out there who are struggling with this, you are body, soul, and spirit, but it's a spirit man, the spirit person who's born again in Christ. That, that triune nature we have, inseparable, but it's that spirit man that's in control because that is where God relates to us, spirit to spirit. God is spirit, and we relate to him in spirit and truth. <laughs> Good news, great news. Guys, we're living in amazing times. The Holy Spirit's doing amazing things. If you're not born again, if you're, if you're dead in your spirit, get born again. And you do that by repenting of your sins, turning away from that old intellectual or, or flesh life where, where you're controlled by, by desires and sensualities and addictions. Repent of that. Repent means to change your mind, turn away, recognize it as sin and invite Jesus into your life. And your spirit will come alive. Let me tell you, if your spirit is not alive, you cannot understand scriptures. You cannot understand what Jesus said. And that's what he was talking about. 
John chapter 3. To see and enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. You must become that new creation. So new creation, the new creature, <laughs> the spiritual person that is going to advance the kingdom of God and see the signs, wonders, miracles, salvations. It's good news. <laughs>